Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at what a cinematographer does, what role they play in the film, what they do and don't do creatively, and how to become a cinematographer if that is the path you want to go down. So for a little preamble, I'll talk about my own qualifications. I am primarily a writer and director, though I have served as my own cinematographer on a bunch of commercials. I have actually been a cinematographer for, for other people. Uh, I did this ad with Gronkowski. So I feel as though I'm pretty well placed to give a outline of what a cinematographer does and doesn't do on the film set. The reason that the role of the cinematographer is hard to pin down is that it changes totally depending on the cinematographer, depending on the director, depending on the film and the type of film that you are shooting. Traditionally, the cinematographer is the head of the camera department. So they are responsible for hiring and firing the people beneath them, meaning the camera operator, the gaffer, the grips, uh, the DIT. They are in charge of those decisions, uh, how to allocate resources sometimes with the producer in you know how much to pay different people, how big the team should be, all those sort of logistical decisions. But if you're a very small movie, your cinematographer may be the DP, as well as the camera operator, as well as the grip, as well as the gaffer. That person may be responsible for all of those jobs, whether or not they do it themselves or they hire people to do it. The cinematographer plays a very big role in creating the look of the film, but they are not responsible for the look of the film. The director is responsible for the look of the film. The director of photography acts as a resource for the director to achieve the look that he or she is after. In a lot of ways, the cinematographer is an advocate for the image of the film as opposed to the performances of the film or the uh, money making of the film. They are the person who has to advocate, who has to sort of be the lawyer for getting the money of the film and the time and the resources of the film up onto the screen in a way that can make the film have more visual impact. It used to be that cinematographers started down in the cinematography department and worked their way up. They may have started as techs charging batteries, then become grips, then become gaffers sometimes, usually became operators or first or second ACs, and then finally graduated to cinematographers. Now in the digital era, people can go out and buy a camera, teach themselves how to use it, sometimes get jobs by renting that camera to productions, and have never been anything but a cinematographer. But along the way, they probably have done all those jobs as a cinematographer. There are very few cinematographers left um, in the film industry that can't also operate a camera. Often the cinematographer translates uh, the sort of airy-fairy creative um, touchy-feely language of the director, meaning I want this to feel tragic or I want this to feel um, uh, inevitable into something that the gaffer can uh, use to light, meaning, oh, I'd like, you know, hard light coming from this angle or soft light coming from this angle, or I want um, everything to be very high contrast or very high key. In a lot of ways, the cinematographer acts as a translator for the director to the crew. The DP also has to coordinate between the what the director wants and what the producer can afford. Usually uh, the director's in on that as well, but often the director will be asking for something. The DP will have an idea how to um, achieve that. Uh, but then the producer will tell them, oh, we only have money for this or this. Um, so then the cinematographer has to, you know, try and give the director as much of what they want as they can while still staying within the money that they have to do that with. Almost always the director wants, you know, more than they can afford. And so a good cinematographer is also a politician um, negotiating between the director, the producer, um, you know, the wardrobe people or the art department, you know, advocating for different things at different times, um, you know, trying to make amends, trying to smooth over rifts. Uh, and you'll find actually quite a few very successful cinematographers that don't have that much technical knowledge, but are very good politically within the set. And so they get hired again and again. A long time ago, I used to work in commercials and there the cinematographer uh, role is very different because you have only a 30 second commercial and the uh, advertising agency may have hired you as the director, but then they've hired the, the cinematographer for that particular look. Um, and that 
is probably the most tense uh, cinematographer director relationship because uh, the in that case the cinematographer works for the agency or the production company not the director and so the director is sort of there to direct talent and do some things um, and then the cinematographer is there to create the image that they think they've been hired to create and it leads to a lot of tension on set but on a narrative film the cinematographer is almost always hired by the director um, there have been a couple of instances where the studio or the producer hires a cinematographer and it always ends poorly because the cinematographer is the closest sort of ally, the closest person that the um, director is working with because they're really in charge of translating the image in the director's mind into a reality in front of the camera. And so there are a lot of discussions uh, on my movies. I've almost always spent the majority, I would say 50% of my time working with a cinematographer as opposed to the actors because you know each scene has different actors whereas you have a cinematographer for the whole film. When directors build relationships with cinematographers that they like, they tend to use them again and again and again. Like the uh, multi-film collaboration between Christopher Nolan and Wally Pfister or the Coen brothers and Sir Roger Deakins. Being a cinematographer successfully really is a question of style and personality. You have to, of course, know your stuff. You have to know, you know what lenses are, what lights are. Um, you have to know what the different roles and protocol of the set is. But far more important than that, that only gets you in the door. What makes you successful as a cinematographer is your relationship with the director, how well uh, you can discuss and disagree um, and achieve what the director's after in the amount of time that lets you get the uh, the stuff that you want to get. It always has to be a collaboration. It always has to be a discussion. Uh, directors may not like what you're going to tell them. You, they're going to ask for a certain thing and you're going to say that's just not possible with the resources we have and the time that we have. But you then have to come up with another way of doing it. You have to say, hey, I want it this way or I want it this way. I think the, the secret to those director cinematographer relationships is cinematographers making connections with directors early. It's no, you know, you can't wait till a director is the next hot thing in Hollywood to be like, hey, I'll be your cinematographer. That person probably has already made a couple of films with someone that they already trust and like and have a shorthand or have developed a language with. You have to take a chance and work really hard for very little money on a lot of films with a lot of people with the hope that they go on to bigger and better things and the hope that that connection, that relationship you've forged um, will go forward and they'll hire you again. In return, the director places a lot of trust in the cinematographer. If they choose poorly, the whole film can go off the rails very, very quickly. And cinematographer-director conflict is probably the most common thing that derails a film. That makes the director feel like they didn't get what they wanted, they didn't have enough time, makes the DP feel uh, as though they've wasted that those resources um, and, and invested in some, something that's not going to go anywhere. Just having a camera and some lenses and some lights is not enough. You really need to go out there, um, find, find stories and storytellers that you believe in um, and really help them bring their stories to life in a way that's very giving, in a way that's very selfless. It is a really hard journey and uh, not one that I wanted to take professionally, but I definitely have a lot of respect for everyone that does. That is our look at what a cinematographer does and how you can become successful as one. Uh, there are no easy answers. You have to go out there, find people um, to collaborate with when they're not famous, when they don't have any money, hoping that by the time that they do, that you will have a rapport with them and they will hire you again. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.